We are joined now by our panel of the day, Green MP Chloe Sawbrook and soon to be Cabinet Minister <laughs> David Seymour. Good morning. Good morning. morning. Am I warm? Am I <laughs> close? <laughs> well, spring is coming and uh, the sun is shining. <laughs> OK. What's your portfolio? <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> okay, let's talk about something else. <laughs> let's start with the, um, this idea that New Zealand has been a bit quiet because we're in this caretaker government phase where no one's really in charge, properly in charge at the moment. And there are some critics who say, well, that's not great at a time like this when we've got Israel and Hamas at war with each other and we need to be more vocal and giving more aid and all that sort of stuff. Chloe, do you think that it's a problem? Uh, look, I mean, the Greens' position is incredibly clear, as it has been on this issue for a really long time. Um, what we have here uh, in the situation in Gaza in particular is, as uh, I understand it, with the most up-to-date news, that approximately 50% of the homes of those civilians have been bombed. Uh, we have a humanitarian crisis on our hands, and we've also seen, as of last week, that the United States voted down a resolution for a humanitarian ceasefire. So I do think that there is a role for all political parties, at the very least, to come together, and we could potentially do this outside of the formation of the government to say that we have consensus on the need for there to be a call for a ceasefire. Yeah, do you support calls for a ceasefire, David? Well, I think obviously anything that ends the violence and the suffering um, would be fantastic for those people right now. But uh, I think we've also got to be a bit careful of trying to insert ourselves in our own issues into this. I mean, this is a major conflict that's been going on. Some people would argue for 2,000 years. I don't think whether or not New Zealand has a caretaker government or a proper mm. government or what we think about it is number one on their minds, frankly. Uh, I think what is important is that New Zealand plays the best role that it can. And yes, um, you know what we can do, practically that would help us is not sit here and pontificate should there be a ceasefire. It's, it's, it's vastly complex. Uh, what we can do is actually make sure that New Zealand is doing its bit, providing the aid that it can afford, doing it efficiently and rapidly. You know, that's but the I practical suppose, thing that we can do. I, I guess, but if there are children mm. being killed, shouldn't we all, shouldn't we just as a baseline have, have a rule that we say, mm. when that's happening, please could you stop? Mm. Well, of course. Of course we should. Mm. But again, you know, I think that oversimplifies what's happened here. I mean, you've had you know, a terrorist organisation that has attacked a bunch of people, done exactly that, uh, that now uses civilians as a human shield, uh, which means that it's very difficult uh, for the Israelis to go after the terrorists that have attacked them. And it would be easy to say, well, just stop. But as I say, this has been going on arguably for 2,000 yep. years. So, I mean, one. again, I think it's it's very easy for us to sit here and say, oh, well, obviously this is the right thing. Um, you know, we've got to respect exactly how difficult this is and what's really going on there is a lot bigger we, than what we understand. We also do have to respect our long-standing legacy of upholding the international rules-based system. And here we also have a situation where, you know, the reporters from those who operate within agencies in the United Nations have made it abundantly clear that what we are witnessing in some of the most egregious instances are war crimes with likes of collective punishment being rained down upon Gazans who are currently and uh, occupied Palestinian territories. And there is a role for New Zealand to play, and I'd say for the thousands of New Zealanders who have marched all across the country this past weekend, there is a role for politicians to respond and to show that leadership as well. All right. Let's talk about light rail in Auckland, because it's basically being put on the back burner, on the scrap heap, with National soon to come into government. Um, do, Chloe, do you would you try and work with, with National on this to try and get them over the line or try and talk them into maybe a cheaper version of light <laughs> rail or something? Are you Look, the, the Greens proposed uh, with our, as part of our transport package uh, throughout the election, and we've said this the entire time, that the government was proposing tunnelling underground for the provision of light rail, that it makes next to no sense to do so. We can deliver it far cheaper, far faster and with less embodied carbon if we were to go above ground. Mm. And for the money that we would save going above ground, in Auckland, we could also deliver light rail above ground in Wellington and in Christchurch. So there's a lot to be made out of actually making far more economically and climate efficient decisions here. Do you think that's something you'd reach out to National on? Because I mean, you're the Auckland MP. Yeah. It affects our Absolutely. area quite I've, a lot. And I've actually also been speaking to um, Auckland Mayor Wayne Brown about this, so I understand you'll have on the show later uh, this morning. So you'd, yeah, I think that there is something you, to be said you're about quite Auckland. Quite buddy, MPs. buddy these days. You know, I, Wayne. I don't think anybody will have to guess what myself or Wayne are thinking, uh, and we're just as robust with each other as we are in public, uh, but i got to say 
that I think that there is some real positive gains that can be made for Tamaki Makoto, our largest city, if we are to rally even the 40 MPs in our parliament that are, list, are based in Auckland or electorates representing Auckland. Speaking of strange bedfellows, how are you and Winston getting along? Oh, just fine. Have you guys spoken at all? No, no. So you still haven't said anything to each other? No, we haven't, no. And not even on the phone? No. Oh. So, it's, who's do, so how's it working? Who do you talk to? Who does he talk to? Well, let's put it this way. I, I think politics for the last few years has been far too focused on personality and drama. Um, in actual fact, what that has cost us is the ability to get results. So we've ended up in a society where things cost too much, things are far too unsafe, and we're more divided. So the way that we're doing this coalition is we're working through, you know, what do people want at the end of a result? Uh, a stable, united government. Uh, will we get to that? Uh, I'm sure that we will. And that then we're going to roll up our sleeves and start fixing the numerous problems uh, that have stacked up. I mean, one of them is that for six years the government has been attempting to build light rail, never really got clear on what the purpose of it was. Was it to get to the airport? Was it to drive intensification in Mount Roskill? Um, never really clear. Um, those are the sorts of problems, along with the amount of crime, that, that hasn't stopped. You know, this weekend's been another bad weekend. Yeah, I know. Um, and also, as you had Cameron Baggery in here, you know, make life affordable again. There's serious problems around regulation, around government spending, and education. Yeah. So, so, okay, so, so there's, that's there's good. quite a lot to do. So we can play the game of who's talking to who and so on and all the rest. But yeah. actually, I think what people are going to want to see at the end of this is a stable, united government. Okay, can fair enough. Solve those so what, what can you give us an idea then, if you don't want to talk issues and you don't want to talk personnel, can you at least give us an idea of when we will know? Yeah, I think you'd be pr become pretty clear um, once the special votes are counted, because that will give you an idea of what that new government looks like. Um, but I'm uh, you know, very happy to talk issues. I mean, the issues have been the ones that we've talked about for quite a long time now. How do you make sure that government gets value for money? Because when it wastes money, it sucks the life out of the rest of the economy and makes it harder for people to get on. Can I ask you know? one final question? This is just on actually for both of you on transparency. Because when Labor signed their coalition agreement with Winston Peters back in 2017, mm. we, the public, never got to see that 33-page document. It was kept mm. secret. And um, the Ombudsman ruled and said, actually, that's fine, because it was signed by Jacinda Ardern as Labor leader, mm. therefore not needed. Do you think that's fair? And will you promise to make any deals you do that you write down mm. public? Um, look, I think that we should do that, and I would have no problem with uh, releasing a coalition agreement uh, between two parties. I, I think that that should be in the public domain. Cool. Um, so, you know, that's certainly our starting point, uh, and I'm sure that people will see that in the fullness of Sounds time. Sounds very open, honest and transparent. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd, 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 well, I'd agree with that, but I'd go a step further and say that, um, you know, the Greens' position is that we should have an independent policy costings unit within our parliament, which says, you know, with all of the promises that different political parties are bringing to the election, that we have a baseline arbiter within our Parliament that it's independent of any political party to cost up all of those policies based on set variables because I think that that actually would be in the public interest as well. All right, guys, thank you very much for thank coming you. in. Thank you. And hopefully, you had a restful weekend. Absolutely. With the uh, with the Labour weekend there, Act Leader David Seymour and Greens Chloe Swalbrook. It is six away from seven.